Well, thank you, my brother Stephen Mbidde, reporting live. So many people are trying to escape Kampala and go to the uh, villages to meet their loved ones. But then some of the people are saying it's because of the anticipated violence that culminate from this election as we veer to January 14th. So many people are s giving different reasons as to why they are going up country. But then as NMG would like to call on members of the public, those who are, yes, asymptomatic, if, you, if you're very young, energetic, you could be like me, but having the COVID-19 disease, it's just not affecting you. But then if you go up country, meet that elderly grandma, grandfather whose mm, lungs have, you know, worn out, whose immune system has worn out, they will be affected by COVID-19 and they'll succumb. Politicians have died, civilians have died, lawmakers have died, 231 people have succumbed to COVID-19. So it does not discriminate in that regard. And uh, the people who have been floating COVID-19 guidelines, mm -hmm, saying for me, I'm from the NRM party, you're going to be facing it rough. The communications manager, that is Mr. Dombe Manuel, uh, is working with the area DPCs, the district police commanders in various districts to ensure they rein in on these errant NRM candidates who are actually flouting COVID-19 guidelines. The main man himself, Dombo, joins me right now in studio. Very good morning, sir. Good, and yes. good morning, our listeners. How do you intend to rein in on these errant candidates who are flouting COVID-19 guidelines? First and foremost, mm -hmm. people should realize that COVID is real. Mm -hmm. The media and the journalists have been saying that there has been a conspiracy between politicians, especially those of NRM, mm -hmm. and the police, but mm. I've been wondering what the type the of media or the opposition. I have been the, it's the opposition, the opposition appearing <laughs> on the media. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. when they choose mm. the members of NRM conspiring with the police to commit suicide, I fail to understand what exactly how beneficial mm. that would be. Mr. Busiku, where things have reached, people are dying. Indeed, it is indiscriminate. It doesn't uh, take on NRM people, it takes everybody. And doesn't discriminate on religion, doesn't discriminate on, uh, on education. It takes you, as long as you're a human being, you are vulnerable and it attacks you, you go. So, to us, we decided the Secretary General has directed all the DPCs that they must direct the rein in on the members of NRM, wherever they are, to ensure that they must comply with the COVID regulations. There must be no exception because this is not being done in order to show power, but it is being done to prevent the lives of the innocent people and the lives of the politicians themselves. We have lost members of parliament mm. who belong to NRM. Mm. That is a problem already created in the house. Mm. Now, their families have, been beca have become vulnerable because the breadwinners have died. Mm. In circumstances like this, would you want again to continue subjecting people to increase the risk? That's why the right on of Kaswele Lumumba has directed and said, let the DPCs reign in, let us protect our people. Others will complain, but when they are alive, that will be better. Mm. Should we expect some jail time for these people? Or simple pep talk? Absolutely, if the DPCs do their work, mm and they rein in, either they will caution them, they will prevent the meetings from taking place without complying with the regulations, and they may disperse the meetings. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the police has been accused of uh, dispersing meetings of the, of the members of the opposition at times. Why would they disperse the meeting of an NRM member if it has violated the regulations? Mm -hmm. And the question would be, is this a selective treatment of offenders? Mm -hmm. And now the DPCs will have, the onus will be on them to answer. But the president has been very clear. The secretary general has been very clear on members of NRM. Unfortunately, within the regulations of the party, this is the farthest the secretary general can do. There are no sanctions that he can do. He cannot dis disqualify you as a candidate. He cannot refuse to provide funding because those regulations are yet to be developed. All right. But progressively, I think the Secretary General is becoming tougher and tougher in ensuring that the people of Uganda are protected. Of course, that's the way to go as the COVID-19 cases skyrocket to 31,187.
it's really, really important that uh, everyone adheres to the standard operating procedures. But then, as it is, we also ha uh, uh, have noticed that uh, the election campaign has become a war of words. Over the weekend, uh, the president was in Hoima, and he did call the Chagulanyi supporters fools. He did mention that many of them are whites, but some of them, he was categorically clear that they are Ugandans and they are big, big fools. But then when we did talk to Robert Chagulanyi, he did mention that that is a uh, factor that shows that President Museveni is ripe for retirement. Well, this is a campaign. I've told people, have you ever been so, in a campaign? So, so we should expect this, you have, this you have you ever been in a campaign? Yes. I want to tell you that uh, when you are in a campaign, do you know what happens? When immediately you go to a place, mm -hmm. you get intelligence briefing from your teams, whether you are in the opposition, whether it is individual, whether it is national. People will come and tell you what your opponents have said, people they have things they have claimed. The Chagulani team has uh, used the very terrible words against mm -hmm. the president. Mm -hmm. They have ridiculed his name, they have ridiculed his... Uh, his academics, they have ridiculed so many things. And you definitely expect a bab from the other side to say, but who, who are they? Some of the so words that have been used, dictator. Mm. You do not think President Museveni is a dictator, based on what we've been seeing. Given what Uganda has been, and uh, in order to become fa a firm leader, others mm. will call you, because you are firm, they will call you a dictator. But they don't know that this is how states are run. Mm. And I want to tell you, that President Seveni will continue on his campaign trail mm. like he has done. He'll continue sending some of those tough bubs. But I want to tell you that uh, he must also give assurance to the people of Uganda mm. that he's in charge of the country. Because you saw what happened recently during, mm. the, <coughs> during the recent riots that took place in Kampala. November 18th, yes. I was in Tororo and many investors ran out of the country. I remember going to the cement mm. factory to inspect a few things to find out what exactly the government can do in support of the... And some of the people had run... Uh, they had thought it had started. Had they uh, run out to say, let us go and find out what happens. Because of the threats individuals were making. So, they think, even when they can... The elections have not taken place, we're just in a campaign. The president has a direct duty of ensuring that Uganda is stable. He must create peace and create hope. And he must create an environment that ensures the private investors who have come here to bring money, to create jobs for our people. He gives them assurance and comfort so that our people can earn some money. Mm -hmm. And then Uganda can also have supplies. Based on the intelligence you're receiving as a government, it seems like uh, there are some foreign actors that are trying to work with the National Unity Platform uh, party supporters to cause havoc within this country. How true is this intelligence or accurate? You know... President Museveni is the president of Uganda. But he's also the NRM flag bearer and presidential candidate mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. campaigns. In his other court as president of Uganda, he has resources and information that is put to his disposal. Mm. That he gets briefing every day. Specifically provided for by the state, funded and deliberately investigated. So when the president comes out, even when he may talk as a candidate... Mm. He is already aware and he's privy to information that many Ugandans may not be having. Isn't that the role of the security minister or internal affairs minister to come out and let the nation know that we understand there are some foreign actors who are trying to work with some local political parties to cause havoc and not a presidential candidate in it a race? It doesn't uh, do any harm when the commander-in-chief says it. I see. Because the president is mm. the commander-in-chief. He's in charge of the country. He has been briefed. By the time the security minister gets an opportunity to come to uh, get an audience, and the president, you have had, you have been on the cameras talking to the people of Uganda, and you didn't use that opportunity to tell them the likelihood or what you have had, then the problem may be yours if mm -hmm. subsequent actions come when you should have prevented them by the information that you provide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to the National Unity Platform, they are saying that this information is being fabricated to stop Robert Chagulanyi in his tracks uh, from campaigning, even from participating in this election wholesomely. But you have also heard what uh, one day the Chagulanis themselves have said. Mm. People on social media have been inciting violence against people of sec using sectarian tendencies. Mm. The Banyankole must do this, these people must... Uh, even during the violence, we started, look, mm. why did the people show violence? So you, you, you mean Ch these, Ch Chagulani may be arrested. these YouTube channels were being used to instigate violence? Absolutely. The when you see 
what people are doing to instigate violence, mm. when you see the resources that are channeled within the country in order to do certain activities, the Financial Intelligence Authority may land to information to track certain things that may be happening within the country. And they will not come us to here to give the details, but once the president comes out to say something, you know that he has a basis on why he's saying this, and he has the source of information as to why certain things have been happening. Mm. And of course, if Honorable Chagulani and team will not like it, but what do you do when you get intelligence information? Mr. Domba, when we kickstart this election cycle, I've hosted you several times. Yes, the, the messaging was that, mm -mm. National Unity Platform, these are very young people. They are not a threat to the government, but all we are seeing right now is focus on the National Unity Platform candidate, Robert Chagulan. You even have a president who is saying, this young man has a big following. I need to tap into his support base. Isn't that proof that, indeed, Robert Chagulan is a threat and President Seveni is shaking? The problem and the threat is not Robert Chagulan. The threat is the political dynamics that are at play. The and forces working behind it. Not the forces working, but the number of things that are happening. Mm. The pop look at the, 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 the population mm. dynamics, the, 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 demo the demographics mm. of the country. Mm. We have more young people who are going to vote for the first time mm. th than previously. They have never voted. The only president they have seen is President Seven. And for them, the only thing that may be on my mind may be well, just one change, even when without knowing what the change is going to do. That is a strong political dynamic. Secondly, as uh, a party, NRM, I want to tell you and I want to confess, mm. that at one time, NRM used to take people to Changkwanzi, recruit young people, train mm. them, teach them, reorient them. And mm. there was complaint from many people within the public. And somehow the NRM party reduced or stopped doing this. Mm. And uh, what has been the consequence of this? It's produced production of so many young people whom we have produced, vaccinated, Taken to school, studied, they have uh, studied during NRM time. They have using the social media and the internet facilities that have been made possible because of the NRM and the administration mm -hmm. and the channels that we have been doing. And what happens? The opposition explains them things. Mm -hmm. To use propaganda against the NRM mm -hmm. and who have not been countering. Mm -hmm. So progressively after these elections, as a party, we must go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and find out these young people, mm. how do we tap in the group of young people in order to utilize their energy and age mm. for transformation of the country, but also to reorient them to understand where the country must be mm -hmm. because of the patriotic nature of the things that we expect of every citizen. Mr. Dombo, is it propaganda when one says that we need better roads? Is it propaganda when one says we need equal access to health uh, care facilities? Is it propaganda when one says we need better imp or improved uh, educational facilities within Uganda? Is it propaganda when one says we are dealing with skyrocketing numbers of unemployment and the youth need to be helped? It seems like most of these young people are going to the National Unity Platform, not because they hate President Museveni, but because of most of the wrongs that have happened uh, since 1980. Six. Would you blame these young people? It isn't propaganda to say what you have said, mm. but it is propaganda to say mm. that nothing has happened. Indeed. For instance, the other day I saw my brother. Of course, it would be propaganda to say nothing has nothing happened. Nothing has happened. And that's mm. what the people have been saying. Mm. Look at you, Uganda. But would, it, would it be propaganda well, to say we've registered some wrongs or some mishaps or some shortcomings since 1986? But President Museven has mm. been in the media himself taking that. Mm. Confessing and wondering what he can do with Ugandans who are thieves. I see. He has put broad laws. He has created institutional governance to ensure that corruption is fought. He has even demonstrated, gone on the streets to walk against corruption. Mm -hmm. That was an acknowledgement by the head of the state Something that some wrong. of these things and many of these vices do exist. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you that it is not God who made the it is not NRM which made the Ten Commandments. It is God. Before NRM was created, God made the Ten Commandments and said, thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. So stealing existed even before NRM existed, before Uganda existed. And it was a God to create the Ten Commandments to ensure that these things don't happen. Mm -hmm. But what has happened in the churches? What has happened in many countries of the world? And what is happening in Uganda? So war against corruption, war against misdeeds is a continuous process 
That must happen every day. But to come in Uganda and say it has not been happening, this will be propaganda. Mm -hmm. You can look at the roads. Look what the Tamaka roads the president has, mm -hmm. has launched. Recently, he was in Wakaka launching Tamaka roads. He was in the Moroto launching Tamaka roads. He was in the Chenjojo launching Tamaka roads. And that is in, the biggest in, contestation. In, in every region he has gone to. And that is the biggest contestation what right now, that? Mr. Domo, because there's a lot of improved infrastructure developments within up country, uh, within the upcountry stations. But then when you come to the urban areas, we are dealing with so many potholes, and many people are saying maybe that's because many people in the urban areas are allied to the opposition, and many of these upcountry strongholds are allied to the NRM. That's why you're seeing now development in these areas and not the city centers that have been neglected. On the contrary, I know. If you looked at the funding structure, mm. there was a, mis a misnomer mm. within the structure of government mm -hmm. of calling, for instance, look at Kampala. Calling Kampala a district mm. and say Kampala district. And then you provide the funding to Kampala like you'd provide the funding to any district. Mm. And this was a misnomer. And when you look at the money that has been provided, for instance, the rehabilitation of road of uh, infrastructure within the municipalities in Uganda. That what forced the production, the introduction of that facility. They have done roads in every municipality apart from the new ones in Uganda. Look at the market structures that have been built. You know what uh, your window has been looking like. Mm. You know what these many of these funny markets have been looking like. Right. But government deliberately decided to construct markets in the urban areas mm. in order to create working facilities and improved condition for the people of Uganda just because the local authorities could not raise enough funds to do that. Mm -hmm. Now to go and say that nothing has happened. Mm. When the president, wherever he goes, he went to Busia, he went to Tororo, he went to Soroti, he went to all these places, either launching infrastructure projects or launching roads or launching whatever that could be done. Mm. So the young people go and tell lies. But the people of Uganda progressively are discovering mm -hmm. what has happened, mm -hmm. and they do appreciate, and they know that Uganda, is, is, Uganda's future is being secured. Indeed. And of course, President Museveni did mention that he's planning to lure some of the support base of Robert Chagulani to his side. How does he plan to do that? Maybe he has uh, you know, given you some information in that regard. But then the leader mm -hmm. of opposition, Betty Awolo Chan, yes, she from the FDC, she actually says President Museveni coerces people and also um, mm, threatens them to vote for him. Is it true? What does the you bribe people, then you coerce them to vote for you. What does the word campaign mean? This is a campaign period. Campaign means that you are going to woo the people from the Anything opposition. to get the vote. You are going to woo the people from the other side. So it is okay to use money? You are going to woo people from the other side to come to your side. How you do it, what the mechanism that you use, there are so many ways that happen, with so many things that happen behind the scenes. Indeed. People can be promised positions. Mm. People can have challenges within a... Me, when I was a member of parliament, mm -hmm. I know how I used to woo people from my opponents in order to come to me. Mm. Somebody could come to you and he says, I'm stuck. He, ha he has a wife who is in the hospital. They have retained her because of the hospital bills. And you make a contribution. Whereas you are giving relief to somebody, that, that help alone may make somebody to consider and say, if the person I'm supporting hasn't helped me, and my opponent has helped me, isn't it time for me to make my mind and make decisions? But a campaign means a campaign. And I want to tell the people is that we are in a campaign and we are campaigning. And uh, I don't want uh, the leader of the opposition to say much mm. because I can look and see many of her friends who used to say that. Mm. And we are with them on this side of the NRM and say, you are, I'll not be surprised if they also not become issues also on the way. Mm. Also coming to NRM. Mm. But for us, this is a campaign I also and see we take it seriously. And I also see you're doing. trying to woo Mogesha Montu to your fold again. I don't want to come I, and is say Is he responding? I don't want to say that on the media <laughs> because that will be really... That of is of a because you mentioned it in the media that you're trying to <laughs> woo <laughs> Major General Mugisha Mountain back to the NRM. So it would be right to use the same No, media. this is a campaign. All, yes. all, all, all those uh, statements that we make yes. and whatever we've done is part of the campaigns. But I want to tell you that uh, NRM, mm. when the president says there will be no opposition tomorrow, that means that there is a deliberate and specifically designed strategy on how this should be happening. Mm -hmm. And it's not in my duty to come here on the media to mm. begin divulging mm. because it is this is a war. Mm. I uh, don't want to...
<laughs> this is a war. This explain. No, this is politics. How can politics be war? I it thought we were just talking things out. It's a war of words. Somebody sends Bob, somebody does this, but at the end of the day, people must count votes. How do you count votes and how do you get expect to get the numbers if you're not wooing the people from the opposition? Shouldn't we be you? focusing on the manifestos of the particular po political parties, like the NRM, your manifest manifesto, securing the future and not simply throwing jabs at the other opposition or political candidate? Isn't that what our candidate is doing? President M7, apart from mentioning a single mm. word and mm. he says they are fools. Yes. He explains the manifesto and he shows one, what we have done over the years, mm. why we haven't done what we have mm. were supposed to do and what we plan to do mm. the subsequent years. And of course you did mention that uh, if you're going to help someone who's not getting the help from their political party, they'll be wooed to your you know, NRM party. But then we do have 77% of this young population being young people. They are unemployed. What are you willing to do for them to woo them to the NRM party, if any? When you look at uh, what President M7 has been saying and how he has rebuilt Uganda, one of the things that NRM pr fans pride of, the first one is creation of security and ensuring that the people of Uganda, you see, once you are in a secure environment, you can use your head. Look at government. By the, way, that, that, by the way, Mr. Dombo, that argument has been debunked so many times by these same young people. They yes. say, fine, security is here. We are thankful to the NRM government for having put in place a conducive environment for us to do whatever we want. But we haven't been given the, es the, the tools, yes, the, the essential th services that we need to be able to thrive under a peaceful environment. Peace is there, but we do not have the tools. We do not have the money. To you go see, ahead and build life. You, you see. That's what they say. You see, in NRM, when mm. if you listen to the President Seven is teaching mm. and his smart way of explaining how Uganda has been reconstructed right. at this level. The first thing is that you must understand the history. Whoever has no history mm. may even find a problem of having a future. Indeed. That's why the president delves in our history to try and make the young people appreciate that it has been a cost, it has been a time. Building Uganda to what it is, it has cost people, people died. First of all, people went to the bush. Half a million. They paid their lives. Mm. Even those who came back to reconstruct Uganda to make it what it is. Mm. There are others who have been dying on the way. But because of NRM's consistency, it has created the peace. It has a built infrastructure project. Mm. It has invited the private investors. Mm. They have created jobs. And it has educated people. And people have been in power. And of course, that's why we've been seeing a lot of support in the north and northeast, uh, areas that were being hit by the LRA insurgency. People saying in thank Karamoja, you. you are yes. People saying thank you, NRM. So they were voting for the NRM party. But then the tide has shifted. In 2016, Mao was not in the race. So most of the votes went to Besiji, who actually had lost in 2011 the north or northeast vote. But then Fast forward 2020, we are seeing Robert Chagulani, you know, uh, without structures within the north and northeast, but then making a lot of noise within those jurisdictions. Aren't you afraid you're going to lose those votes that you've been no, winning? No, we are not. If you, when you go to, for instance, I've been, I was in West Nile. Many young people who are talking now, they have the liberty and the, the cut say, because they have been born in Uganda mm. and they have in, they're enjoying what has happened. Mm. But many of them don't know that many of their parents, many of their fathers were born in exile. Actually, many people in West Nile, they were across either in Congo or in Southern Sudan. And it's only President Seven who went and said, walk back, come in your country, let us rebuild Uganda. Mm -hmm. When you go to Northern Uganda, both of the children who are born in IDPs, and they are going back to their respective countries, and you see what the infrastructure, the roads, and the commercial activities that are taking place, and the agriculture. You know that Uganda is being rebuilt and reconstructed. Mm. But there are also young people who have gone on social media. And they say we have gone to school, we have got degrees, and uh, we need jobs. One of the things that NRM is now trying to refocus on mm. is that when you look at our education structure, it has built capacity, but it has concentrated on training people on doing office jobs. Yes. Job seekers. <coughs> people who are job seekers. Now the question is, what do we need to do to transform these Ugandans into using their hands that God gave them, into using their brains and skills in order to make a contribution to the economy? Vocational that training. is killing. Mm. That is killing. And when he, the president says he's going to have vocational schools in every constituency, this is a very huge paradigm shift. And even our people of Uganda, do you know that in Uganda, here when I was in parliament, 
we converted technical is, is, is schools that, that is very in, in, into universities. That is very honorable, but we are going for a short break, uh, the Minister Dombo. But that is very honorable. But mm. then the issue is, as you plan to skill the young people, we already have those who had already left the education system and do not have jobs. When we return after this short I'm break, we'd to like to know exactly what that. the NRM is intending to do for this lot. Absolutely, I'm going to Anything. explain. You're, you're still watching Morning at NTV. It's a very contentious, but then insightful conversation with the communications manager at the NRM party, Mr. Dombo Emanuel. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Watching Morning at NTV. Double Data. Airtel introduces Double Data. The biggest deal ever on smartphones in Uganda. Buy a smartphone, 3G or 4G, and get 100% data bonus from Airtel. Airtel is giving you 100% bonus data on all weekly and monthly bundles for every new smartphone connected to Airtel for the first three months. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to enjoy Double Data. Double Data, Double Data. Oh. Airtel, the smartphone network, regulated by Uganda Communications Commission. Diana, one day you will become all that you dream of and more. And everything will be different. You will become a legend. the My Rights, My Power campaign is a foundation to human rights initiative in partnership with the Electoral Commission, the Uganda Human Rights Commission and NTV brings you the third TV dialogue under the theme, Unwrapping Election Day, 14th January 2020. The third TV dialogue which will be held on Monday the 21st of November 2020 from 3 to 5 p.m. will host Ms. Ruth Sechindi, Director Monitoring and Inspections, Uganda Human Rights Commission. Mr. Joseph Bayanga, Secretary General, National Association of Broadcasters. Mr. Abdul Salam Waiswa, Head Legal and Compliance, Uganda Communications Commission. Retired Major Rabwani Okwiri, UPDF. Honorable Ronald Mukasa Senkuhuge, Alliance for National Transformation Flag Bearer, Kampala Central, and Electra Commission. This initiative seeks to address public concerns as Ugandans go to the polls in 2021. We would like to hear your views. Visit our social media pages at FHRI2 and Facebook. Dance Council Live this Christmas season with Dance with Valentino, an exciting reality TV show where real life stories are transformed into dance and performed by the celebrity guests. It's entertaining, dramatic with the salsa, the cha-cha-cha, the tango, etc. Join us on NTV Sundays at 6.30 p.m. with repeats on Fridays 2.30 p.m. And don't forget, NTV Uganda streams live on YouTube. Watching Morning at NTV. Welcome back to the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. My name is Romeo Busiku. The president, Yuri Kagutum Seven to Habura, will be in Mubende today campaigning and sending his message of securing your future at home. And we do have our reporter, Habak Ziwe, who is on the ground in Mubende to give us the latest from the NRM camp. A very good morning, Ziwe. What's the latest? Well, good morning, sir. Us here in uh, Movende. Uh, this is now the first day of uh, the NRM candidate Yoweri Museveni's uh, campaign trail in Buganda region. He's starting off here in uh, Movende, where he's going to meet uh, the NRM leaders from five districts of Movende, Chankwanzi, Chiboga, Kasanda, and Mitiana. There are very many outstanding issues here in Movende, and one of them is to do with land. Many people are having issues with landlords. 
who are evicting people from, from land, those who don't have land titles and um, a genuine ownership of this land. This is one of the sticker issues that uh, the NRM candidate, Chowim Seven, is likely to face from the leaders uh, of the five districts. There's also another issue of gold mining in Kasanda and how uh, the, the miners were evicted some time back. we we'll also wait to see what the NRM candidate, Chowim Seven, will talk about that. Just here where I'm standing is the highway street and um, all this street has been now painted yellow. This is different from what we found out uh, last evening where we saw some posters of opposition leaders like Bobby Wine, like um, other presidential candidates. But by early morning, all those posters were nowhere to be seen. The streets have now been painted uh, yellow with only President Jordan Seveni's pictures and uh, the candidates of, of, of NRM. If you look at Mubende district, Mubende as Mubende, it's one of the districts with the highest number of voters. Uh, uh, like districts like Kampala, Wakiso, Kasese, Mubende and others. So that means that uh, whoever captures this district is likely to have an upper hand, I may say, in the general elections. So that is the mood here as the NRM candidate Chowim Seven comes over here uh, to campaign for the first time in the Buganda region as he also seeks to, uh, to extend his mandate. From here, Museven will be in uh, PG tomorrow and, uh, and, uh, and uh, from PG he will proceed to Masaka. So back to you in the studios. Well, thank you, my brother Herbert Ziwa. He's reporting live from Movende, where the president shall be taking his campaign message of securing your future. Well, since 1986, the NRM is boasting of the prevalence of peace and security within this country. But then what about the skyrocketing numbers of unemployment that have forced many of the young people who make up 77% of this young population under the age of uh, 25 and 55% of this population under the age of 18? We would like to go to... Uh, we would like to go to Entebbe, where we would like to go to Entebbe, where our reporter Ivan Walunyolo is going to be giving us a story on the skyrocketing fares. Uh, the taxi operators in that area are saying they cannot ably abide by the stand op uh, standard operating procedures because um, because of the uh, the issues to do with the capacity. Fourteen people. Yes, in the passenger service vehicle, you have to now pack with seven people within that car. So they are saying they have the people within the seven people that will be traversing in that car will have to pack with the rest of the money, meaning they are going to be hiking uh, prices in that regard. Let's go to our reporter, Ivan Wallen.